is my final for this tournament. These are the two teams I think are most likely to make it to fight for the Summoner's Cup, and I am so excited. That's a trade kill back in pawn. Now stuck on top of the dragon. Baker contends for his kill of the game, and it still trades back and forth, but EDG are routed. SKT undaunted. It has been a day of grudge matches here at the League of Legends World Championship. We did see a rematch of the MSI Finals, round two bout between Febovin and Westdoor. We just saw that recently, as well as some more games on the day. A little bit of the battle between NA versus EU. Hurts a little bit, but it's, but, it's, <laughs> but it's all right. We're still alive. We're still here. And right now, the players creating and the, the fans creating an awesome atmosphere for us here as we go over a few of the games. We'll start and see EDG versus SKT, a nail biter to start the day. But really, EDG kind of spitting out their teeth through the entire game. Not anything we expected. Yeah, SKT, they came out swinging here. They had the red side for counter picks. EDG actually even opted into early picks on their solo lanes and got counter picked in both of them. SKT, with a really good early game plan, they made EDG pay so heavily for the early dragon focus. I mean, full skirmish, no wave clear, early Darius pick, and overall, there was just beauty and simplicity. The way SKT handled yep. that game and how they got Marin especially ahead, and then super stepping up. Once he got that red buff, he completely dominated the top lane. Just it made they made it look easy. They took out a title candidate and they made it look easy. That was actually phenomenal to see overall. Yeah, yeah, Marin going back to his roots on that Renekton. Yeah. Beautiful thing to watch. It's like the new juggernauts. We have bringing all the new models, and Marin's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with the old instead. And Marin actually stated in an interview after the game, he said he thinks if EDG played Koro, he thinks EDG actually would have done better in that situation, which is interesting since this tournament kind of favors the individual top laner, the Fiora, the Darius, what's going to go hard in lane. Yeah, it's also interesting to think about. So EDG, they did gain some information in, yep. in this matchup because yep. they got counterpicked in two lanes and they saw what SKT would use to attack them. They also saw SKT's early game, you know, how they deprioritized the dragon and went for the early gold so that they could win the team fight afterwards. Same token though, Faker came out and said, well, <laughs> last true. time my champion pool wasn't deep enough for Faker standards, that is. I've been working on a lot of counterpicks. He busted out the rise mid, something we completely didn't expect. I also said, also said he has more. He had a counter pick ready for mid lane Aurelia. Yeah. <laughs> he, he literally, I, 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 I believe that Faker does have a counter Absolutely. pick ready for literally any champion. And, and he knows how to play every single yeah. matchup to like perfection almost when he has barely played those champions in competitive. Like the way he also just used his ulti, he wasn't afraid to zone. He just stands toe to toe. Yeah, he used his ulti to zone for a cannon creep. He's like, well, you're yeah. not getting that cannon creep. I'm going to use my ulti and I'm just going to send a message right here. And he did that against one of the better mid laners in the world. It was actually. Pretty impressive. Yeah, and while Faker played well, like the whole game wasn't even about Faker, oh. right? Marin, the captain of the team, was magnificent during that game. Coming out huge on Renekton. Moving on, H2K versus Bangkok Titans. A little bit of life breathe in for H2K, which scared me in the first day because they themselves banned GP, Darius, and Fiora. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're coming into this meta banning all those on the blue side. <laughs> You need to do something. You pick them, and they pick them more. This a little bit of wah, 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 added to their <laughs> lives, and they had a good time with it. You could tell they were playing pretty fast and loose there for a lot of the yeah. game. They it left a lot of openings, though. You know, made quite a few mistakes. If it wasn't for Kasing yeah. being a ridiculously good Alistar that game. They might have even yeah, yeah. dropped. Well, that's a correct myself. It was BKT that banned yep. those. It was yep. H2K that banned the Mord and then picked it today, which what I thought yeah, was yeah. weird because they also gave away the Thresh that game. The first thing I did after that game was go to Kasing and ask him, you know, how are your landing those Alice and Combo? Because <laughs> everybody coming into the yeah, tournament was like, it's so hard. It's like these guys, you know, they got practice, they're all gonna land it, but we've seen multiple top tier support players simply fail Alistair combinations. I don't think Kasing yeah. failed a single one that entire match. While the rest of his team was playing full on solo queue style, just like see him, kill him. Kasing was playing control. We've seen other count. supports as well really messing up that combo, putting themselves in a bad position. Lost Boy doing that quite yep. a few times today as well. Ooh, a little early to bring up TSM. <laughs> I don't want to touch on that one quite yet. Delay to pain, delay to pain. Yes. <laughs> so looking at H2K doing well, Bangkok Titans, however, really not faring well coming into this one. And they had to have a bad taste coming in, in their mouth with knowing they had to band everything on the, on the B side. They came out swinging though. I mean, G4 on the Twisted Fate, they went with a different look. They didn't have him split pushing. He yeah. was trying to make cross map plays. He went for ganks. He was 
they were doing their best to punish the openings that H2K gave them. It was just too little, too late. So yeah, they're getting individual outplayed by H2K, who are playing pretty loosey goosey. They really, I don't <laughs> think it really mattered for them whether they won or lost that match. As much as much as they let on in the interviews, like there's a chance, and maybe we right. can make a game of them. Yeah. They play pretty casual there, but you could definitely see the mismatch between. BKT, Dan H2K, and then the rest of the group right there. All right, so with SKT and their win and H2K's win, let's check out how Group C standings now stand throughout the tournament. It is going to be 3-0 for SKT, 2-0 for EDG in that group, 1-2 for H2K, and BKT, 0-3. It's going to be really tough for them to really make an impact. Hopefully, can start just putting in some kicks on other teams there. Be a little mm -hmm. spoiler. Moving on now to we have Group D next. LGD versus KT Rolster. Everybody as well thought LGD going to the finals. This team's going to be the one to do it. And then the pick ban phase, very odd. But I'm going to say a lot of China's pick ban phases have been a little odd this tournament. Just so hard to predict. I love what Zyrene said on the analyst desk when Monty predicted LGD to win. It's like, you're either going to be right or happy when KT ends up taking the game <laughs> anyway. So that kind of worked out. Nobody really expected it to be LGD fans, difference. not very happy. LGD yeah. players, not very happy. LGD tied with TSM right now on day three at Worlds. <laughs> People coming into the tournament were like, yeah, tied with LGD, but just not in the way they were hoping for. Yeah, they've honestly been crashing and burning here ever since the first upset by Origin, who came out really strong. LGD, the, I don't know what happened in that pick man phase, because they have had you know some questionable ones before, but this one was just kind of blew your mind. Yeah. OG TSM boys, looking at yeah. this game, everybody was kind of thinking, is TSM taking a hit? Cloud9 and CLG both did well, so that's obviously playing on their mentality. And I think that's something that TSM takes a lot in, in, you know, in their wheelhouse is their mentality, and it can affect them poorly. I mean, the NAV are picking, everybody's like, OG completely mind game TSM, but TSM were They were, were in. hovering over the Vagar, which I felt like would have been a really We were cheering in the room. Yes, pick it now! <laughs> they were just in prime <laughs> position also, even with the current picks to close out yeah. that game. But it seems that TSM wasn't used to playing with a lead at all. And then obviously they got outscaled. Really good stylistic mismatch to play such a slow yeah. composition into such an incredibly slow team like TSM. But where was the vision in the mid game? And yeah, exactly. No Pick, picks aside, the play from TSM, they've shown the same problems that they've had for a long time. Coordination and communication. Uh, Les Boy, Santorin, Dyrus, they are kind of all over the place here for TSM. It, 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 it almost boggles my mind in that sense because coming over to North America, Lost Boy was almost one of the best transitions that North America has seen. Being a Korean player, being a foreign player, the communication seemed to be there. Was was it not? And it just worked in NA, and it, or did it actually fizzle out? Whatever that spark was is gone. <laughs> and that actually made it so that NA second seed took a convincing loss here against EU's third seed coming. They to talk the about you know. Yeah. So I just want to point out to the viewers, EU is in fact greater than NA. <laughs> We'll, we'll wait on that because what, what if, I count, right if I count the groups What's, right now, we've got uh, two undefeated. I think we're staying two, in this group for this <laughs> segment. Two for of now. the groups, North America tops two of the groups here. That's Let's gotta look be... at those standings right now. KT 2-0, OG 2-0 as well, LG, LGD and TSM sitting at 0-2. A big shock of their LGD. Honestly though, Origin, I think in this group, huge surprise, like really, really, really strong for them. Fanatic Black or whatever everyone wants to call them. These guys have shown up so big on the world stage. Yeah. And I like the interview afterwards with Niels where he was like, yeah, we have only been looking a couple games ahead yep. uh, of us. Since we got out of Challenger, we're like, oh, we'll maybe play six in the LCS. Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe we'll try and beat Fnatic in the LCS. Now we're at Worlds. Now we're trying to just get up our group. Now they're at the top of the group, tied. And there's there's always the expected Worlds buff. I mean, I was one of the heavy critics Happens. myself coming into the group. Yeah. Rating him the weaker that member. Shockwave we and everybody's a fan again. Yeah, rating him. I don't think the Shockwave mattered as much, but just the consistently solid higher play because that Shockwave was still set up by his teammates. But his Anivia performance was actually pretty impressive. The way he, he just synergized with the team, busting out that pick, yeah. slow scaling build. Definitely impressed with expect at Worlds. But even though, still, yeah. the rest of his team still playing better too. He could yeah. still be the weakest member in his group, in his team, but it doesn't matter because his team's <laughs> playing so damn well. Let's hit the final groups of the day. We just saw the last yeah. two games. First, OG, or I'm sorry, IG versus Cloud9. This is going to get a little bit of love back and I smile on the NA faces <laughs> here. It's gonna walk out here. What a game this was. And in the beginning, Incarnation looking so much better in the mid lane there, to help control everything. There is so much faith coursing through my veins. <laughs> Can you see it here? We have enough for two teams. Cloud9 are able to go 2 0. And I have to say, that Incarnation that you point out, he's been so big for them. We talked about it at the end of the normal uh, season. But man, Incarnation has been huge for the team ever since High came back to work with him in the jungle. You still, I mean, go ahead. There's the easy narrative here. 
you know, Cloud9 doing well, but I think we're missing the crucial point. Yeah, yeah, EU mid laner. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> good. All right, dodge the bullet. Dodge the bullet. That's actually a good bullet. I'm gonna save that one. Disappointing bar performance by Kitties. That could have uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. changed the entire. Kid and Kitties. Mm. Very, very disappointing overall. And disappointing. then yeah, EU mid laner. <laughs> you have to look at top lane as well. If Cloud9 is gonna keep going like this, they and they even said themselves, we let balls fall into a situation where it wasn't working for him. Yeah. That also happened as well in their first game when he was trying to play Gangplank. So it almost is a trend that they're able to get out of every time with well, shot calling. It's a good thing that they were able to see that and still get a win. So yeah. it actually didn't cost True. them to learn this lesson. Hopefully moving on uh, in the group, then they'll be able to retain the, what they learned from that game yeah. and you know not let balls get into that same situation again. Because we've seen so many times the dunk master drop the ball. <laughs> so yeah. many Darius uh, have been picked really early and been countered uh -huh. or you know, nar. bad comp against them, or not supported by the team. I do like what uh, High did in that sense because he's facing he was facing off against Kakao. Ruhr, the, the best jungle in the yeah. tournament. He Good said, point. guys, you guys keep laning this. I'm just going to take all the jungle farm I can get, stay ahead of this guy. And then, well, balls, too bad for you, but I'm not going <laughs> to look bad against Kakao here. And it ended up working out somewhat overall. And the one thing I loved is the trial and error <laughs> High talked about is, you know, we go to Baron, we see how fast they check it, we kind of get that answer and how fast we can do it again, and we just go for it. Trial and error in game, testing things on the spot. The snap decision so nice. High have always been there, they're still here. Can't, like, it's ridiculous to even believe this story that he brought the team coming from seventh place. Lucky all number the, seven, all baby! The way to the top of group B. I mean, if you're IG right now and you're scouting the match, who are we playing again? Yeah, yeah, seventh place team out of NALCS. How did they get here? It's true. By some uh, pretty, right. pretty right. ridiculous, you know, Slide under reverse the sweep. Nah, we got this one. In, in the interview, though, they said, yeah, oh, I remember Cloud9, I remember High uh, in the mid lane. Oh, he left the team. Okay, we stopped paying attention. Oh, he's back. Why? He's jungling now. So, moving on, <laughs> AHQ Fnatic, definitely looking at Hooney in the top lane, a little bit of lackluster play. I say carefree play, not lackluster. They knew what they were doing. Hooney flashing in. Fabivin was playing his ass off in the mid lane to thwart everything his team was bringing down. Honestly, they fell apart. Did you when see that teleport? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I I'm waiting. I haven't used the, the classic line quite yet, and we've seen some bad ones. Um, but yeah, that was uh, just, all it was around, rough, rough to all, watch. all around, really, yeah, exactly. They had a. It giant was a rematch. Fizz got his. Or West Door got his Fizz again. You thought, oh, it's just kind of the same thing. But we also have to give props for the rest of AHQ because yes, West Door got punished really heavily in the mid lane. Um, but Ziv and Ann, these are, are on. These are the two guys that we hyped up coming into the worlds yeah. for AHQ, and they showed up huge for them. Both of them carrying. Um, and in the end, on on that Jinx, able to take it home for the team. Going yeah. pretty crazy. Ziv's Nar was, was immaculate. His oh. pacing, just keeping out of range of Apprehend. The only time he got into Apprehend range is when he wanted to. When he then got a Nar into the wall or a four-man stun, throwing some houses down on the opponents. And that set up on, you know, for that positioning and cleanup. But had just fantastic play overall. And looking at how Group B played out so far. 2-0, Cloud9 on top. 1-1 for both AHQ and Fnatic, and IG, China not having the greatest start to the event, sitting at 0-2 there on the final group of the day. These rematches will be really cool to oh, see yeah. after yeah. the final day. Absolutely. Very excited. And you talk about loosey-goosey play or whatever. <laughs> the careful. The, Call it what you want, Kobe. People, <laughs> people have been, you know, first picking this Darius and just throwing him all over the map. This is not a safe pick. You know, he yeah. has, he's very, he's a low mobility champion himself. Yes, he's a juggernaut. They take a while to get him moving, right? Uh, it, you have to pay attention That's to That's inertia. Him. Once yeah, he's going fast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have it's to be going. Got to get the train going. All right, so let's take a few, uh, or look at the few of the matches tomorrow, go over these guys, figure out what could actually pan out. TSM versus LGD is gonna be one we're first looking at. LGD and TSM both looking to pick themselves up. As Krebo said, these teams are tied, technically, <laughs> uh, right now. Yep. You know, with that being said, LGD are extremely angry right now. Yep. And I, I don't know, TSM have been showing problems that they've had in the past and it doesn't look very good. I think Imp might be so angry and if he takes it out on Wild Turtle, we may see some big, Ooh. big issues here, especially since yep. TSM, even if they get slightly ahead, I'm just so worried. Division, it's not there. I mean, play some of these boards. Yeah. Just get, get them in the jungle. Come on, TSM, you can do it. KT Rollster versus Origin, one of these teams looking to give each other a loss as they go into the groups tomorrow and looking at the rest of the games. It's it's going to be pretty crazy. Yeah, those first games, all the Group D games are going to be really exciting. We get to break some of these ties. Yep, it's going to be great. So that is going to be all from us here at Day 3. Get some rest. We'll be back here tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us for Worlds tonight. Good night, man. GG.
first match. It's going to be an amazing one. It's China's Edward Gaming versus South Korea's SK Telecom T1. That's a trade kill back in pond. Now stuck on top of the dragon. Faker gets his first kill of the game. And it still trades back in fourth. But EDG are routed. Faker picks up the kill. Mako smacks easily. And there's really not much that Amazing Gate can do on this one. Pond pops yielding for a bit of damage. So needs to buy some time. SKT undaunted. Take down Edward Gaming. H2K pick up their first win at Worlds. Austin is uh, useful for KT. They get a Zonzi. Now he's going to fight Arrow. It's going to be close. Arrow! Chain of Corruption comes across. But only two kills. Now three kills picked up. Acorn jumps in. Tries to pick up a little bit of something. Score will go down. KT to start out their world championship. It's kills on each side. So far, though, two for four. Oh, oh, oh. Expert had a great egg. Double kill for Soaz. Oh, throw in. Throw in so we throw in. Balls does go down during the middle of all that. IG trying to trick her up, but it looks like C9 has a triple kill for Sneaky. The damage from, whoa, the damage from his Zier and from Sneaky is so big. Double kill for his Zier already. And they complete the 2-0 already at Worlds. A lot of trouble. Gonna go down. Westor gets the kill. Gets taken out, though, as Uni comes in. It's a brawl. Fanatic are okay, and that is gonna mean the damage. Turns around. Double kill, though, for Ani. He's beginning of the resets. Right. That's right. Westor getting the kill. Triple kill. AHQ still with the edge. Has rain over the rest of Fnatic. Make a run for it. There's a double kill for Westor. AHQ takes down Fnatic.